Well, the plan today was to get on with the lithium build, but I'm waiting for a little bit of information from a couple of manufacturers uh, before I finalize a couple of bits on that, so I can't get on with that. So then I thought, okay, let's get on with the control panel. I've been dying to get on with this. This is an Arduino based control panel and it's going to control half of what the van does, actually way more than half. And it also connects to my mobile phone via Bluetooth so I can control everything from the phone. But I've got a couple of questions on that that I can't get the answers to today. So I'm going to get on with this, the 240 volt electrics. Before I get started with this video, I just want to point out one thing. I am not a trained electrician. This is just showing what I'm doing for my van. If you're not sure about any electrics, don't copy my videos. Get someone in who knows what they're doing. It's not going to cost a lot to get them to wire it up for you. Better safe than sorry. A few months back, I watched a video on YouTube by a guy called Greg Virgo. Um, the video was on his planned 240 volt and 12 volt system and I liked a few of the things he'd done. I'll put a link to his video in the comments below. It got me thinking about what I wanted from my own system and I've borrowed a few ideas from Greg and added a few of my own. This is a drawing of a fairly standard consumer unit you'd find in a motorhome. It's got a main switch for on and off. It's got an RCD to protect the circuits and then a couple of circuits that you would run all your sockets off, your lights off, that sort of thing when you're on 240 volt. You would also on 240 volt possibly charge your um, leisure batteries and you would possibly if you've got a three-way fridge have your fridge on 240 volt and if your heating has the option you may have that on 240 volt. How it works is power comes in here from an electrical hookup lead, it goes through the switch and then it goes over to the RCD. From the RCD it's fed into the fuses and then say if you had 240 volt sockets the live would connect here, the negative would connect here and the earth would connect here and your socket would work. On my consumer unit, I want the option to be able to switch from mains power to inverter power. And to do this, I've decided to add a changeover switch that's built for consumer units and it's built for switching from mains power to a generator in a home. I figure this will do exactly the same job with an inverter. So to do that, I need to put the switch in line. It's a double pole switch. So I'll just be able to switch from mains power to inverter power by clicking this. The slight issue I found with this was I'm going to be powering everything off mains or everything off inverter. And this means that if I've got say a 240 volt charger, the batteries are gonna be trying to charge themselves via it when I'm on an inverter power. So I didn't want that. So what I decided to do is go for a dual rail consumer unit. Dual rail basically means it has two negative bus bars from what I can work out. So what will happen is when I'm on mains power, everything will be live. When I'm on inverter power, everything will also be live, but by switching off the first LCD at the same time as I switch to inverter power, only one section will be live. So only the section that runs all the sockets in the van. So this is the consumer unit I've bought. Um, it's just a standard home consumer unit, but a dual rail one. Um, as I said in the drawings, so we've got the master switch coming in, this bank controlled by this RCD, this bank controlled by this RCD. This is how it comes. To make it change over, this is the switch I ordered. So it has a generator in on one side, mains in on the other side, and then you can switch from mains to generator by flicking the switch. 
I then thought after seeing Greg's excellent video, um, he had put um, two LED lights, two indicator lights, onto the outside of the case. He just sort of built them in to show when you had inverter power and when you had mains power. I thought this would be useful. I thought this was a really good idea, so I've copied that. I then got thinking about polarity. Um, polarity abroad, I've seen mentioned very often. Um, often on the continent, a lot of campsites, if you're on electric hookup, the polarity is backwards. Now, the way people generally get around this is they use a polarity checking plug. And if the polarity is the wrong way around, then you can buy a polarity checking lead, uh, sorry, a polarity reversing lead to go on your electric hookup cable. I thought, well, while I'm doing this, why not work out a solution so it's all dealt with straight away? So the idea I came up with was another changeover unit. This one will do the polarity, so if it's on one, it will be normal polarity. If it's on two, it will be the opposite polarity. And to check that, I bought one of these little testing plugs, which I'm going to take apart. This one can be taken apart, I've already done it. And build this in, so I get a visual show of if I'm on the correct polarity or if I need to change it final thing I bought for this was the cable. This is 32 amp I think. I think it's 6 mil, something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description um, cable and this is what I'm going to use to wire it all up. The maximum amount of input I've ever seen on any campsite is 16 amp so that's absolutely ample I think. The next job is to take everything out of the consumer unit that it comes with, get rid of all of the MCBs, the wires, etc. And then put everything I want back in it where I want it, ready for wiring up later. Also a quick plan on the outside of where the switches etc will go. So I've got as far as this point. Um, so I've got the, the breaker in, I've got the RCDs in, the main switch in, got things where I want them and then had a little bit of a change of heart. I decided I didn't want the changeover switch um, that I originally um, had, the little dialy one. So instead, I bought another one of these, which arrived today, it's now a couple of days later. I also decided I needed a couple of different MCBs, the actual switch off bits. So I've bought a couple of those. And I decided I wasn't happy with this 32 amp cable as well. So ordered some thicker stuff. This is 40 amp, this is 6 mil. And the cables were a lot more chunky on it. So what I'm going to do is strip this cable down and use the wiring from inside here to wire this up. The next thing I'm going to want to do is plan where everything's going to go on here. Uh, this will just be a switch for the polarity checker and I think I'll have the buttons over here and then I need to measure everything so for that I've got this um, I just need to measure all of the exact cutouts everywhere etc get it onto the um, all the measurements down onto the computer I also, on the changeover switch, I want some labels across here and here. So I need to measure the sizes for there as well. And then once I've got all those measurements, I need to go over to the computer and draw all these. And then I'm gonna print them all out onto vinyl. And then they just need cutting out. Stickers are now all fitted, so now all I've got to do is quickly Dremel out the holes where I've marked them already on the sticker. This is for the LED display for the polarity and for the switch for the polarity checker. I'm not the neatest with the Dremel, but then this has got edges on it anyway, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. And then for the two LEDs the other side as well, quickly take those out as well. And then just make sure 
Oh, and the back of the plug. There's a little bit on that. Cut that off. And just make sure everything fits. So I've finished wiring it all up now. Um, I didn't do this bit on camera, but at the end of the video, I will put a wiring diagram showing exactly how I've done it. So that's how I want it laid out. This is the polarity switch. That's wired across to the polarity checker. I changed the way I did that slightly when I took the plug apart and took the prongs off it. When I tried soldering to the pads that were there, the pads were falling off. So instead I soldered directly to the prongs of the original plug and just heat shrinked it. This is the switch for the polarity checker. Um, over here, here's our changeover from electric hookup to inverter. Going over to the other side, these are our LEDs to tell, to tell us when we've got electric hookup and when we've got inverter power coming in. I think what I'll do now is I'll connect it together. I've already connected a couple of temporary leads to the main hookup and simulated the inverter hookup as well. Um, and then we can show you it all working. So here it is, all finished, ready to be installed. I've just added a couple of temporary leads to it. I'll start with those. So if you watch the green LEDs, if I plug in the main simulator, the mains comes on. If I plug in the inverter as well, the inverter is on as well. I'll just take the inverter out for now. Opening it up, if I switch the power on, we're on. If I want to check the polarity, just flick this switch. It was already on. Flick the switch and we've got three LEDs there saying the polarity was right. If I did need to reverse it, just switch it off put it on reverse, switch it back on, and it's telling me straight away that it's reversed. Put it back to normal, switch it back on. And then we don't need the polarity checker on again. So at the moment it's on electric hookup power. It's powering these RCDs. I've just plugged this extension lead in you can see on it it's got the power on with the switch on it there that's on one of these over here at the moment it's wired directly to one of these if i click the rcd to test it switch it off and it's off put it back on and it's back on now if i remove the mains power and just have the inverter power on No light. The second I switch it over to inverter. Got the light back on. Basically it's all working fine. This switch only does the mains. I figure that gives me a switch on the box for the mains to be switched on and off from and the inverter's got its own switch anyway on the inverter to switch that on and off. It gives me like another way of isolating each appliance. I think that's pretty much it actually. As I said, I'll put the wiring drawing at the end. If you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask. Um, hope that was some you helped to someone. Thanks very much. Bye bye.